Hey, and we're back. All right, so I've got the car stripped here. Didn't take long. I did this, um, made some tea. I posted on Facebook a little bit, and now we're ready to get started. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this car yet, except for a brief list of what the customer had requested. A RAM, some screen mesh, some damage, maybe some runners. Uh, so we'll just make this, you know, as post-apocalyptic looking as possible. I used um, a clean strip, uh, paint stripper, it's kind of like a weird goopy gel. Uh, I posted it on my um, Instagram a few weeks ago when I did a whole big pile of these cars. So you can check out my Instagram feed at Fictinfu and uh, check that out. So car is stripped and I used a little bit of fine steel wool and there's actually a magnet, a rare earth magnet in here. I like to keep a little magnet with my steel wool so when I'm buffing it collects all the excess stuff and I don't have to worry about getting steel wool shards in my eye. Yay! Uh, so let's see here. So the Hot Wheels car, as you saw before, pretty clean, pretty glossy. But when you look at these cars after the paint is removed, you can tell just how much of a layer of paint that was. You can see all the little pitting, all the little flaws in their um, forming process. So it's actually kind of neat just how much that thick coat of primer and paint uh, covers up here. Um, this is neat though, it's got that, that Chevy logo on the back, that ought to weather up real nice. Uh, you can still see a few little bits of the green paint in here, that won't matter. I primed the inside piece and it's it's dry. I use Duplicolor um, Auto Primer when I do this kind of stuff, when I do all my models really, I love this stuff. And it's just a spray can primer. Um, this is where my clip was. You can see how it's still chrome. And I just hit it with a light coat of that, but I didn't want to prime this or the wheels yet. And there's um, there's reasoning for that I'll get into in a bit. But, uh, well, for this anyway, I didn't prime it because I want the glue to stick to it. You don't want to glue over top of paint or primer when you're gluing something. Um, it'll come right off. Uh, even super glue, and you'll have a thin layer of paint on the other side of it. Uh, part of what I'll be doing for this project is I just I keep my little magnet wad over, and I was told maybe September, and I was told I would be able by my producer, my vendor, that I would be able to ship these out October, November if I got them the files on time. Well, I did. I worked my ass off as usual. I hate procrastinating, got them the files, and they were supposed to be done in stainless steel. I still don't have the stainless steel etch. I got brass etch months later than I was told I was going to get it, and um, brass isn't correct. Brass works. I sent some of the customers who pre-ordered the steel brass. I asked everybody, you know, do you want to wait for the steel, or do you want brass now? And um, a bunch of them opted for the brass. Some of them are waiting on the steel, and that's fine. Um, it should hopefully get here soon. Uh, still not here. But um, the etch turned out really good. I did three different um, sheet designs. Uh, this one's got uh, a rack, for like a roof rack that you fold. Um, there's various screen meshes. Uh, some of this stuff is for like door armor. Um, this is a milk crate, which is cool. Uh, some of the stuff is just embossed like details for the most part, like jerry cans, um, new hubcap designs, spike strips, um, various window meshes. And there's different sizes and shapes on um, of the meshes on each set, along with different, you know, objects. Like this one has a different roof rack, uh, has some skulls, has some little skull hubcaps. Uh, this folds up into kind of like an armored turret. Uh, these are runners for the side, and if I zoom in here, you can see a little bit of a, a diamond plate texture. And the mesh itself is real fine. 
uh, this mesh right here doesn't uh, doesn't have a border, and I don't remember if I designed it to not have a border or if the border got lost somewhere. Uh, I have little offset brackets that you fold to offset some of the armor pieces, like these window boxes. Um, things like this are for roll cages, more spikes. Um, there's a steering wheel on here somewhere. There it is. The steering wheel assembly, some bones for this one. Uh, these, when I zoom in, are saw wheels. So you can put a speed racer like saw wheel, a uh, little sword. Um, so I, I built a little axe. I put a lot of little bits on these. Um, some side mirrors. You can fill those with maybe some uh, Molotov chrome and um, make those mirrors work well. And the other one's got a spiked ram, more like bar-like window covers, more hubcap designs. And all of the stuff I designed uh, has a couple signs too. I forgot I did those. Um, I designed it to be useful and generic. I The windows and stuff, they're different on every car. So if you design for one vehicle, then you miss out on you know, all the other ones. So I wanted to make the stuff generic. I wanted to make it as usable as possible. Like you could, um, maybe not that, oh, this one, this ram here, you could actually use that as a spoiler if you wanted to. And these are spoiler like wings. Um, you could have some fun with it. You could really, you know, I designed it as a ram, but you know, use it however you want. These um, spike strips, you can use them as runners. You can use them on top of the car, on the bumpers. Whatever you want to do. So, I'm gonna. I do want to put some um, mesh on this, and I'm pretty sure that this one from set two is going to fit this best. So, I'm gonna adjust the camera here. While I. Let's see here. Um, trim this photo arch. There we go. That should work. So the photo etch, it's um, on the fret and it has some little tabs holding the parts on. And I'm just going to cut through those with my box cutter utility knife. They're half the thickness because they're etched in of the material, just like the mesh is actually half the thickness as it's etched in so that it looks like there is a frame. This might need, oh yeah, I see this plate sucks. I don't know if you can see, it's dull on the end. So I need to snap it. That's my problem. I save these and I use them for um, putty knives if I have to scrape putty on something. All right, so I cut this bit of photo etch out and I'm going to take my bastard file here, and it's seriously what it's called, and um, I'm going to just it's a piece of little delicate, so, um, you know, be careful when you're doing it. Hold it tight and flat, and I, was, I just want to clean off the nubs on the end, so see how that's nice and smooth? This side has the two little nubs still, so I will... File those away. This file, this file, man, I use this thing for everything. I use it for plastic, um, Sculpey, that's cured, obviously, um, is a great file. I use it when I'm working on, when I used to work on Gundam kits, and I just clean it with, uh, I have a steel, um, oh gosh, brush attachment for my rotary tool. So I'll just clean it with that. Okay, so, yeah, this one fits here kind of perfectly. I didn't design it with this truck in mind, because this truck just arrived today, but uh, that's a good, it's a real good fit. So, there's little brackets here. I'm going to take my flat pliers, and these fl pliers, they don't have teeth. You don't want to use um, pliers with teeth when you're bending photo edge. So, the top parts here, I want to bend slightly back and if you notice on the other side there is a little line etched in and that you guys could actually bend these with my fingers i don't need that 
Um, that line makes it easier to bend. Some of the longer pieces you'll want to use a tool for, but for this, it's fine. And so I bent the little tabs, and those little tabs are what I'll glue to hold that window mesh in. So I'll set that off to the side for now. Um, let's see, what next? I have these little um, science dishes, petri dishes, lids, and bases that I purchased. And um, they're perfect with just a little flat storage. You know, just when you're working on something and you don't want your small parts to get all over the place, that works perfect. Okay, so next up, what do I want to do to this? He wants some side rails. I think what I'm going to do first might be some damage. And, um, I don't think I want to put mesh on this. In fact, I'm probably going to just ditch this window piece altogether. Um, but I'll use it to. Sh I'll show you guys how you can make it look like it's cracked in a second here. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this open because I'm gonna go with the assumption that maybe the driver can put his foot on the wheel <laughs> or the passenger and um, you know shoot out the window for the game if he wants to. I'm gonna switch my rotary tool bit here to um, let's see I need a smaller bit size out of the drawer here. Okay so to correct attachment and I think I'm going to start with this cheap diamond bit thing. It came with um, a Harbor Freight brand Dremel tool, rotary tool, which was pretty garbage. It vibrated all over the place and um, it was impossible to, you know, get accurate stuff with. I like my corded um, Dremel. I don't have to worry about charging a battery. I can just pick it up and use it. So bear with me here. If, uh, I don't know if this is going to obscure my voice or not. I'm going to use this and I'm going to start grinding in some, some dents and such. Try to round the edges a little bit on the dent with the tool. Get in there. Um, putting dents where you would expect to see them, like on the edge. All right, so you can see right here, I put a dent. Right here, I put some damage. When I fill this with primer and stuff, um, you know, some of the little scratches and stuff will go away. And I'll polish it up a little bit more. But you want to think about where the damage is actually going to occur.
And remember, friction causes heat. Your car will heat up. So, you know, don't burn your fingers. So I'm going to change this bit and I'm going to do some bullet holes next. So yeah, like I said, the, um, the rotary tool itself was crap, but the bits that came with it were actually pretty decent. And because they're so cheap, I don't feel like, you know, like an, um, I'm not so worried about damaging the bits as I would a standard Dremel, as I would a standard bit. Okay, let's make some bullet holes with this pointy little diamond-shaped bit next. So, made some bullet holes on here. I added some on the side here as if it was strafed. And it's a little rough at the moment, so I'll use another little bit and I'll polish the edges a little bit so they look more like indents, as if the bullet pierced through. Um, then I just a couple on the back. You know, I'm wondering now about the window, if I should... Um, Maybe keep the back window here and make it look like it's been shattered by some of the bullet holes. That could be kind of cool. I can put maybe a spider web on the one side here and uh, keep that piece. I would just um, end up cutting it here, ditching the rest of it, and gluing it in later. Okay, so strafe, a few bullet holes on the back. Let's... Um, let me figure out here. I think what I'm going to do is get a little piece of uh, 300 grit sandpaper, wet it, and um, just uh, polish the, the burring off of these before I camphor them. So I don't want them to, I mean, the bullets went from the outside in. They came from the inside out, then you would expect to see material sticking out. But that's not how these ones occurred. Okay, I think I lost those two, actually. I don't think I did these two on the back deep enough. Um, like that bit in general might have seen its, um, might have done its last. Let me look for another one in here. I know it came with several. Hmm. Maybe I'll use this little round cutter instead. Let's see what we got here. That'll at least round the edges more. Hello, Marcos. Oh, yeah, there we go.
much better. That actually removed more material, got a little deeper, and um, I don't need to actually punch holes all the way through it with this. A lot of that stuff will be taken care of in the painting and weathering. I'll do a separate um, video for the painting and weathering. This is just doing this real quick. So I got the view on. All right, it looked like my stream cut out there, but um, wait, hey, camera needs to go the other way. Where's my head? Okay. Let's see, it looks like the stream cut out for a bit. I don't know how long it was, but I used a different rotary tool to improve the bullet holes and I will be able to make them look deeper with the weathering by adding just a tiny little bit of black in there. Um, they don't actually need to be holes, they just need to be indents. Just enough. A couple on the back, and a little bit of damage around the wheel wells, some damage on the driver's side door, a little bit of dents here and here, a little bit of dents here and here, and some more damage on this side, including some bullet holes. Okay. I'm down, with, I'm down with that part. All right, so the customer wants that mesh. He wants a ram. He wants some side rails. Um, let's make some side rails first. So pop these wheels back on to see what I'm dealing with. I want to attach the side rails to the uh, plastic part in the bottom. I'm going to make them out of plastic. So gluing plastic with plastic is pretty easy and I'm I could be a little bit of a pack rat where it comes to um, excess plastic so I save a lot of my little cutoff bits so of tubes and everything um, shit's expensive I can I can reuse it but what I'm looking for in here now is some um, small diamond plate plastic and yeah, I think that might be the smallest um, textured piece of that I have. I don't think I have anything with a finer texture. Nah. Okay. So I'm going to use, I'm going to start with this and get my metal roller here. And I'm going to cut a, a strip of this, making sure that. Um, I want to make sure that the pl the diamond pattern aligns nicely. So this is a bit off, as you can see. Uh, this side is thicker, but it aligns with the pattern better. So I'm going to remove that little excess piece so that they have a nice 90 degree angle of the pattern. And this stuff is just um, plastruct um, diamond plates. It might be the 1100 scale. I don't know, it's been a while since I bought it. So I only need enough down to two bits here. So I'm going to line this up again. And have myself a nice strip of this diamond plate for a side rail. Okay, so push the excess off to the side. I got a strip with um, just enough diamond plate texture on it, and I'm going to lightly sand this a little bit just to clean up any of the plastic on the edge that ends up bending up when you cut plastic with a blade. Okay, and how long do I need this to be? So I can get two side rails out of this piece. So keep a pencil and sharpies and stuff handy. Line this up. I want it to be as long as this. A little pencil mark there. And these these um, post-apocalyptic Gaslands Mad Max style vehicles, they're, they're cobbled together. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect that actually adds to the look but I got two equal lengths of the stuff here now 
and I'm going to use um, this is the bottle for my Ambroid Pro Weld. This is my actually my temporary applicator bottle. I keep the stuff in its original bottle, otherwise it all evaporates out of the Tamiya bottle. But the brush on this is, you know, wide and hard to use. Whereas the brush on the Tamiya bottle is very nice. So I'll just put that in there temporarily and when I'm done with this, I'll pour it back out into the other container. So I'm going to glue these. Um, yeah, see, I don't know if you can see. There is still a little bit of a lip there on the edge. So I'm going to actually just kind of scrape it off with my, my blade. And that should do the trick. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to use the Ambroid and I'm going to glue these diamond play pieces to the sides. I'm just going to put down a little glue first to get it sticky. Um, it's not a sticky glue, it's actually kind of watery. Hopefully Hopefully this plastic is beaten gluable. Let's see here. But this stuff wicks nice and it's stronger than a Tamiya cement. Um, yeah, there we go. So I just need to put some more on the edge. And it dries pretty quick as well, so it's good for these quick builds where you want to keep moving. Okay. So this runner is glued onto the edge. Um, I try to use plastic glue for plastics, um, super glue for everything else. Using the appropriate glue will make for a better bond in the long run. You don't want your project, especially if it's commissioned, falling apart on somebody. Scrape the excess off of this piece. Um, a little bit of the lip is fine as it'll help me form what will look like a weld line on here. Okay, so I'll just run a little bit of glue in here. Try not to get the glue running between your fingers and the part in the car because then you'll end up with fingerprints that you'll have to sand away. Oops, see I'm putting that one on and I bent that one. So take your time so you don't make mistakes. Um, let's add more glue and it'll be fine. But what it's doing is it's melting the black plastic to the brown plastic. And it forms a more permanent bond. It's still break, of course. I mean, it, it's just plastic after all. But it'll be on there real well. Okay, so those are on nice and they're on pretty straight level to the ground. So I'm going to set that aside for a bit and I want to put some some round tubing along the outside edge of it, almost like a bumper. I don't want to just leave it uh, the raw edge. Or I could just do some um, some flat strip along the edge too, but I think the round tubing will look cooler. So looking through my my plastic bits here, and here's a piece that'll work. Okay, so I want to cut this the same length as these. And make sure the edges are flat. Where's my file? I'm gonna file the edge of this up a little bit here, just to get it flat. And 90 degrees. I don't want it to not be 90 degrees. And I'll test with this first piece I cut to see if it's the correct length. And it is. So I will use that first piece to measure the second. And I'll just cut it like a fraction of a millimeter longer. Because I'm going to have to file it. Now. 
And it's always, always easier to remove material than it is to add material. Yeah, so this one's good. While the edge flat with the bastard. Mill bastard. I got that from my father-in-law. I got a bunch of them. Um, he gave me a bunch of his old tools a long time ago when um, my wife and I got married. And good stuff. I'm still using it today. The stuff's outliving him. Which is sad. He was a really nice guy. I liked him. Okay, so for these side rails, I'm not going to use the Ambroid. I'm going to switch to the Tamiya Extra Thin. The Ambroid is thin, but it does not wick like the Tamiya stuff. This stuff will, I'll put a little bit on one end and it'll wick all the way to the other. A little touch just to get it in place and not going anywhere. And I like the glue from the non-visible side whenever possible. Less cleanup. Plus the underside is going to be dirty, rusty. Um, any little glue bits will get lost in the general weathering. So a nice little round bit on the side here. Um, I don't know, maybe Gunner can stand on it. All right. trick is though, especially with these extra thin glues, when you have to hold pieces like this, is to not get it under your fingers and the plastic and thus making more work for yourself with cleanup. So a little bit of glue just to get it initially held on so I don't have to use my fingers. And then um, slightly push as needed to get it into position. There we go, side rails are done. Let's use that. Okay, so I did it so that um, on the plastic, so I could just pop this top part of the car back on and got these rails now. It looks a little funny stick it out of the side like that for now, but um, when it's all done, it'll It'll definitely have a different feel. All right, what's next? Um, hmm. So next, I think I might start the RAM, and I want to use one of the photo etch ones I designed here for the RAM. Um, I could do it in plastic if I wanted to. But I think I'm going to play with these a bit. So I'm going to use um, not the spiked one. I've got one that's like a whole bunch of spikes on the front. But I'm going to use this one. Um, this all folds out together. And if I wanted to, I could run additional bars through these holes. Bars of um, round styrene plastic rod from Plastruct or Evergreen. And uh, that'll look pretty cool. That'll look nice and beefy, and I can put some damage on the poles to make it look like it's hit stuff. So I'm going to cut out these photo etch bits here. So I just kind of popped those out with the box cutter, and I also made a, um, a mount for these. So I'm going to cut that out as well. Okay. So first off, I'm going to work on this mount here and figure out how it'll mount to the car. I want to 
how I'll mount it to the car because I designed it so you can um, so it could work with a bunch of different vehicles. Um, let's see here. You know, I think I also designed this one that, all right, see those holes that look like little rivet holes? You could use that on the outside edge if you wanted to, or you could take a rounded metal pin and push them and it'll push rivets out on the other side. And I think that's what I'm gonna do, show you guys how that works. But um, this will end up folding around the edge of the car. I'm gonna grab a smaller jeweler's file here. So there's a couple little bits of flash still in here and I find these jeweler files don't cut as smooth. Don't um they're not as smooth on the edges as my bastard file, which is weird because they're small and it's not. And then I'm gonna take um one of my popsicle sticks with uh 300 grit wet sand paper and I'm gonna wet sand that edge and nice and get it nice and smooth. Okay, I think I'm gonna pop out these rivets and I had a small piece of brass that I had put in my drill and turned so that it was just the perfect shape for doing this. But, uh, hell if I know where it went. <laughs> See, in my brain, it should be in this little thing of Dremel metal bits, but um, it's not. So, why don't I just make one real quick? Let's see. Get this old cup here full of bits of wire and find some old 1 16th inch brass. Uh, I need a pair of tweezers to reach in there. Okay, so a piece of roughly 1 16th inch brass rod, solid brass, and I'm gonna grab my drill. And let me push these photo edge pieces out of harm's way. And I'm gonna mount this piece of rod into the drill. I'm going to snip off the excess. And I'm gonna take this same file, make sure it's turning the right way so that I, when I'm pushing, I'm doing twice the work. And um, I'm actually gonna make this into a rounded point. So I've made it you know, it's getting there. It'll, this won't take long. And use a little bit of this wet sandpaper here. Around the edge. And um, it's nice when you can make your own specialty tools for quick stuff. So now I have a little, little, um, tool here that I could use to push out those rivets. Um, you could use any kind of um, hard enough wire. Brass is about the softest I would use though. I wouldn't want to use aluminum for that. And of course here is the, I think this might be one I made before in steel, but it's got um, heat, um, ash, um, it's all scorched. I don't know. I don't remember what I used it for. Okay, so anyway, I put it in my pin vise. Um, so um, I coated it a while ago with uh, Plasti Dip, and it gives you a nicer grip on it. Um, where did the mount go? Okay. So let's see if we can get in closer here. I'm going to just um, from the whole side, I'm going to put that tool into it. And I'm just going to give it a, a light push on e in each of these little holes. And when I flip it over, you see that it's now raised rivets on the other side. So you can actually do some nice dimensional stuff with Photo Edge too. 
like this. So I'll do this and on the other side, push these rivets out. Um, some of the kits I designed for Industria Mechanica, my company, um, the Ian McHugh ones especially, have a lot of these pushed out rivets in some of my steampunk designs. Um, the Skymark buoy, that whole framework's got a ton of them. So I'm using my um, toothless pliers here to fold this piece, and it'll go here, and then, let's see, I'm gonna actually put this assembly, whole assembly back together just to make sure of how everything goes so everything ends up fitting properly. Um, you know what I might do is I might tuck one end of this photo etch in between here, like this, and that'll hold this ram on a lot better. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, I'll fold the bottom half, and I want to line this up in my pliers right along that fold line. I don't want to squeeze too hard because then I'll end up undoing all the all the rivet work I did, but once you're sure that's lined up along the line, just fold the etch, just give it a fold. Uh, photo etch can be intimidating if you've never used it before, but um, I design it to be as easy and foldable as possible. I don't, I don't like to design kits that are hard to make. Um, it happens, but I really try to avoid that. So yeah, I tuck that in and, um, you know, between that and gluing it on the bottom, that's going to hold on, re that's going to hold that ram on really well. And um, if I push it over a little bit, I might even be able to center those headlights. Nope. All right, well, it's not going to be able to center the headlights. I mean, you know, I didn't design it for everything. But you're not going to see the headlights anyway because of the um, because of the ram in general. So, yeah, I'm busting these this um, sidewall off, of course, because I'm not going to get ample time to dry. That's all right. Glue, glue, and more glue. Yeah, so this stuff, you can tell it's working because it's melting the layers. You can see the melted line, the of glue and plastic there. All right. So yeah, I need to be more careful when I'm picking up the sides of this while I'm, you know, until it cures properly. And I might actually put a little more plastic underneath it just for added support later. I might add a few little side strips here. Um, won't really end up seeing them, but it'll, it'll make the whole thing more sturdy. Okay, so let's make the RAM part of it now. We got the mount for the RAM, and that worked as easy as I'd hoped it worked. I actually haven't built any of my own uh, any of these sets yet because I was waiting on the steel myself but um, I did them in steel because I figured if they get chipped then it's just a natural steel color underneath and who cares but what I'm going to end up doing with these before I paint them is I'm going to put them in some brass tarnishing agent which is going to make them look like a weird grayish brown old brass so if it does get chipped, it'll look more like old metal than it will shiny brass. I don't want to see gold underneath there. So I'm going to fold these edges now. And let me get the, let me see if getting the camera closer to the thing here will allow it to stay in focus better. That's why these first videos are pretty informal. All right, so I want to line this up as close as possible and that just gives it a nice grip you know some it's not in there real sturdy just enough to have something to bend it against and I'm going to bend it forward you want the crease to be the inside of the bend so anytime you use photo etch if you see a fold line that fold line is for the inside and when it folds that line completely disappears and it ends up being one piece so I'll do that same thing on the other side here. And um, you can fold it as close as possible and then, you know, push it against the table if you want to get it as 90 degrees as possible. 
So there, I've got those first two parts of this little ram. And then there's three more parts. I'm going to file the edges. Uh, file the excess snubs off from where I cut it. And then I'll glue all this together. You can um, glue photo etch together or you can solder photo etch together. And I know people that swear by soldering and that's all they'll do. And if you use glue to attach your photo etch, you're a charlatan and a hack. And, and I know people that are like, the other way so you do what you do you man you do what um whatever works for you you do what you're comfortable with and i'm gonna use gorilla super glue because this stuff's pretty nice and strong for this so i'm gonna fold these bits and just see in a sec so one of these is the centerpiece of the ram and that's going to go in the middle, and then these two pieces are the side of the center. And they will fit like this, so you end up with a whole bunch of, you know, um, outcroppings. So for this last bit here... Um, Okay, so I'll then um, glue those three pieces onto this. So let's reset the camera here and get to, get, get to gluing. Okay, excellent. All right, so gluing. I'm going to want a toothpick. I'm going to use some blue painter's tape. Stick that down here. And I'm going to use this Gorilla Super Glue. It's got rubber or something in it, so it works um, really, really well. Uh, before I, I'm going to squeeze it on here. I'll use the toothpick to apply it. But before I do that, I want to make sure that when I glue these two pieces together, that I align one perfectly in the middle. Because a lot of times with the Super Glue. Um, you put that down and it's down. The, this gel glue will give you a little bit more time, but not much. Okay, so this should do the trick. This would, and like I said, this piece um, could also work as a spoiler instead of a ram. Alright, how do I want to do this? I'm going to actually use the lines on my mat. So, I got it lined up centered on my mat and when I put the glue on this piece I'll line it up center on the mat and apply it with some I'm gonna use these plastic tweezers I do use a, I do a lot of stuff with magnets so um, sometimes when I'm working with different metals it's nice to have plastic tweezers that don't get magnetic Okay, so I'm going to hold this bit with the tweezers. Um, some of you guys will be like, oh, man, when I do that, I lose um, my parts to the carpet monster. Um, they fling out the tweezers and they're gone forever. And to that I say, use um, a little bit of this is um, heat shrink on the end of these tweezers and I have other tweezers not at the moment because I've peeled it off but I'll use some of that plasti dip and I will dip the ends of my tweezers into that and then I have rubberized tweezers and that um, unless you're doing something that involves heat it works uh, really well for for gripping these small metal parts so now that's in the center I can just apply these other two bits, glue it down on either side, stand it straight up after I glue it down, and that way I'm assured that the two edges are aligned top and bottom. And you know, rotate your parts as you need to. Um, just a little bit more glue here on the toothpick. That part's glued on. 
And then um, after I'm done gluing, I could just toss that that tape and um, you know makes a nice little quick glue palette that's um, stuck to your table for as long as you need it. Some of these aren't haven't been them straight to begin with, so I want to make sure they're straight. So now I got this front ram piece to put on the front of the truck, and I can glue it to the mount. And I'll glue it to the mount in a bit. I want to figure out, you know, exactly where to glue it from a side angle. Because, you know, if I glue it down, then it's closer to the ground. If I glue it up more, then it's, you know, just make sure I angle it correctly. I also want to see if I could slide some plastic through these holes here. If I can slide the plastic all the way through, then that'll look kind of cool. This is, this looks like round rod, but it's actually hex rod, so that won't work. Um, I use hex rod for making bolt heads. I'll just um, do thin slices of that. All right, I found a little piece of plastic here, and it's too thin, but I've got some heavier stuff. But yeah, I can run that plastic right through all these holes here and make a, a beefier looking, looking roll, roll cage ram. All right, let's see if I have any better plastic in my cup over here. Nah, I'm done messing around. I know exactly where I have it. I have a big drawer full of plastic here, so I'm just going to open it. And let's see here. 0.030. Got a whole bunch of 0 0.030 bits of evergreen styrene here um, left over from the first batch of Clyde kits for putting the fingers together so let's see this is a better fit um, I think 3.5 I think I have some of that 0.035 inch will work better so I'm going to Take a quick look for that. Deeper in the drawer. Okay, I got a strand of 0.035 now. When you do this kind of work for long enough, you tend to have a lot of extra materials and you know what you want to keep on hand for what you're going to do. So yeah, that fits through there. Not completely snug, but snug enough. I'm going to take these. I love these. They're tweezers, but they're nipper tweezers. You can get them on Micromark. And I'm just going to snip that off at the end. Put the rod through again. Snip the end off. And I'm actually going to put all of these rods in here without a drop of glue. Okay, fed that through. Snip the end off. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Got the three of these sticking out on this side a little too far. I'm going to take a lighter. And I am going to, first of all, make sure all these are aligned. I am going to hold the lighter just close enough that it has mushroomed. See, it's kind of like a mushroom shape. Those three ends. I'll push them to the edge, and now they're formed on there. Take my nippers, and I'll do the same thing to the other side. Cut these flush, not flush, but I will leave like a little less than a millimeter just off the edge of each of them. And I will hit this side with the flame. Not too close. They've mushroomed, and now they're in there permanently. They're not going to go back and forth. So I've got these, um, this neat looking ram piece now. It'll go on the front of the truck 
with some bars. Love post-apocalyptic stuff like that. And you can get kind of crazy. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, on the photo etch sheet, on, um, let's see, which fret is it? Um, set one, I have barbed wire. 164th scale barbed wire pieces. Some of the jute twine from my other demo stuck on there. I'll, I'll snip some of this barbed wire and I'll have a few stray pieces of um, painted rusted barbed wire stuck in this grill as if it busted through something and it's stuck. All right, let's see where I'm at then. Um, layer this car back together and be a little more careful about the the side walls this time. The rails. Okay, so got the car layered back together. I want to see how this ram looks. Um, I need to stop saying um. Okay, so. Stick this. I might actually flatten these bottom rivets so that I can slide that piece in better. Probably wanted to show you guys how that worked. And I'm definitely keeping the top ones. I'll glue that down. Um, one of the last steps, actually, I won't. I'll, I'm, I'm going to paint this ram separately and I'll glue it on here until, until the end. And then I'll want the ram. So if I'm looking at the car sideways, the ram, yeah, I want it. I'm going to adjust this, but yeah, I think I want the ram hanging off the bottom of the mount with just a slight little lip of the ram over the top of the mount for effect, but that'll be the ram on the front of this thing. Nice. All right, what next? Mesh, ram, sidewalls were three of the things. Let me go look at my list real quick. Mesh ram, maybe some rails, paint up damage. Yeah, I think that might be all the modifications I have to do for the commission. But, um, I don't know, man. I've got this truck bed here. What can I, what can I put in here that would look cool? Um, I mean, it's got that little detail plate in here, which is nice. Uh, let me see if there's anything on the photo etch. Um. Alright, so if it's a pickup truck and you're using it in a post-apocalyptic death race, where guns and rockets and other stuff and rams and stuff is allowed, the passenger is going to have a gun, so he's going to be shooting shit. The back of the pickup truck, this is a little bit of a low bed, so I would not want to be the guy sitting back there. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with that. Uh, I might just throw some gear back there. Um, one of the things I have on these photo etch sheets that I did is I just did some rough outlines of weapons. So you can see here I've got a machine gun shotgun, some knives. Uh, I might throw a machine gun in the passenger side seat, just leaning up in the passenger side seat. I'll paint it, I'll paint it black, the whole thing black. I'll rub it with some powdered graphite, and then I'll hand paint the stock um, a brown color, and that should look pretty nice. Let's see here. Looking at these other sheets for some ideas. I've got, let's see, I should do something with the side windows. I'm putting mesh on the front window. I should put some mesh on the sides. Got these, what I call dot mesh here. I like that stuff. And I might use, these um, can be used as saws, or if you notice, there's a little line around the outside, you can bend them up and use them as wheel spikes but because these wheels are so um, because this is such a low rider i don't think i'm gonna be able to fit wheel spikes in there so i'm going to avoid that i do want to put something in the bed though 
You know what I might do? I've got, um... Let's see, I've got these two spike strips here. I might put one sticking up on each side of this to prevent people from maybe jumping into the into the back. And there's a couple smaller ones too I can put on the back of the vehicle. I'll do that. And I wonder, I don't think they're gonna work for this car. I have these door armors, but I think they're too wide. They're not the right shape for this car. And I might want to use some some mesh anyway. Let's see, these meshes here are for the little triangle windows that some of the cars have on the door. Just looking for the right piece of mesh to use or modify. You know what, I think I'm going to use... Um, Yeah, I'm going to use um, piece 20 here from set 1, and I will cut it to fit. And uh, this one will actually work for both windows. So I'm going to polish up the sides. So yeah, I didn't really have a plan going into this, aside from what the customer had requested. He was giving me pretty, um, pretty much leeway to do whatever I want. So that's what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna fit the, the etch in like this. So just over the, you know, driver's face here a bit. Um, I want it to look kind of ramshackle and weird, and so, I'll cut this in half, and then um, on the inside of the car, of the truck, I'll put the glue line, uh, let me get a toothpick, I'll put the glue line on the inside of the window edge here, and the glue line will end up being hidden. So let's, um, let's cut this in half. I'm gonna use a pair of old scissors. Because this etch is very thin, this mesh, I could use scissors to cut this in half. And then, since the edge ends up just slightly bent, I'll use those toothless, toothless pliers and straighten it back out again. They make um, special photo etch scissors. I don't have a pair of those. Uh, my friend Tom Grossman sells, sells them, though. If you look up Tag Team Hobbies... Um, if you need an airbrush, he is the guy to go to. Tom is the man. He, um, he'll hook you up. He sells Iwata airbrushes, and I have two of them that I use, and I, I love my Iwata. My HP BH is my go-to brush, and I've been using that for about a decade or more. Um, I started out with some um, airbrushes I got... Uh, the first airbrush I used for model making was my um, Badger 150. And I bought that in 1993 because I needed it for art school. For my second um, year of art school, we were learning how to airbrush. Because it was, it was right on the cusp of when everything was becoming digital. So it was kind of funny. Like, I learned how to do all these hand techniques that I ended up never needing to use in my professional career because I ended up going into graphic and web design. I totally glued that to my finger. All right. Let me push this around a little bit more, see if the... Uh, that is kind of a problem. Okay, you know what? I got a better plan here. Anyway, yeah, airbrushes. Um, so that was the first airbrush I used. And I used that until it actually fell apart from... Um, you know, I didn't really take care of it because it was my first airbrush and it had been sitting in a box for 
over a decade after I graduated and you know I had nothing really to use it for until I started model making um, let's see here I started building models um, aside from the few I did as a child in around um actually I remember it was around September 11th 2001 so I remember being in my basement TV was on and I was watching the news while I was building some Gundam kit or maybe um, an Eva kit Evangelion okay so that one is glued in um, what I found worked easier was adding the glue over top of the etch inside and then pushing it through it's going to push through anyway might as well have it do that not on my fingers I wonder if I should be putting mesh in the passenger side I think he's going to shoot through the roof anyway so that should work All right. Improvising a bit using those um, clippers to hold this up. Okay. A little bit of blue on this side. A little bit of blue on that side. And then move it back and forth. Get in position. And get that toothpick out of there before the glue sets. It has. Super glue sets pretty fast. Okay, so now I've got mesh on this side. I've got mesh on this side. Only the bottom is glued. I want to put a little bit of um, glue on the top of this mesh because I'm going to have to hand paint it. And when I'm pressing on it, it'll bend. So if I put glue along the top, that'll, that'll hold it in on the top as well. Trying to get a nice dot drip of the blue. Let's move around here. There we go. And it, being careful not to get any glue on the mesh itself, otherwise it'll fill in the holes and look weird. All right, take out the excess with a cotton swab. And now I've got these um, mesh panels glued on both sides here. Want to glue metal to metal if possible, because it's just better that way. Um, it, the glue will stick. Like I said earlier in the video, you don't want to glue, you know, stuff to the primer because then it'll pop off with a piece of primer stuck to the other side of it and damage your paint, damage the part, make it difficult to clean up. It's one of those mistakes that people do and. You know, I mean, you learn from the mistakes, make the mistakes, and then you know what not to do next time. Nothing wrong with that. I screw stuff up all the time. Let's tap on my process. And then by screwing stuff up, you know what to do and what not to do next time. So this, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this glued down. I need to add a little more glue here. I might have dried. Plus the curve is um, wanting to bend it back the other way. Once the glue sets, it won't be an issue. Okay, so I don't want to wait all day here, so I'm going to use a little bit of zip kicker. It's always Russian roulette with the zip kicker bottle. Will he spill it? Will he not spill it? If you've used it, you know. Who hasn't knocked over a bottle of zip kicker all over their stuff? All right. So that cures the um, super glue pretty fast. And now I just want to put a little bit of glue underneath these two bottom latches. 
and that'll hold this mesh on the front, which I will again hand paint later because I don't want to be gluing this over the top of the, um, the paint and primer, like I said. All right, so in order to get the glue underneath these tabs, I need to lift them up. So I need to bend them up a little bit. I'm going to hold this etch real sturdy. I'm only going to do one of these tabs at a time. So I got a little bit of the glue on here. I'm going to get it under the tab and then quickly press this tab down before the glue dries. I'm going to hold it down and that'll set up and then I'll I'll do the other side. I already put the zip kicker away. Um, almost there. Okay, so I think with the mesh on the side windows, um, that might be about it. Oh, and the spikes. I wanted to do the spikes. Forgot about those. Okay, that side set up. I'm going to use my... I'm going to hold this tight, bend up that piece a little bit, stick a little bit... Of, uh, that's all cured. Yeah, I really like this rubberized Gorilla Super Glue. Um, usually I end up using the stuff I pick up at the dollar store. It's um, a couple of the bottles of the original brand of Super Glue for a dollar. And I still use it a lot. I mean, it's decent stuff. It's, you know, this stuff. Um, I like the, the BSI stuff, but um, you can never ever get the lid working again. I like to use a push pin. I use a colored push pin for the actual bottle and that stops it up and keeps the inside from drying. When you try to use the lid, you end up with all the stuff that ends up dripping down the sides and it becomes a big mess. So, if you take anything out of this demo, it's that, um, it's that tip. Okay. Mesh is glued on for the window. Um, you can glue mesh in on the inside as well, instead if you wanted to, but I kind of like the look on the outside. I'm going to let the super glue on all this mesh. I mean, even though it's super glue and it says it dries instantly, I like to let it cure for a little bit before I add any damage. Jason Cox. Yeah, yeah, he has the same problem. He uses a nail and it still clogs eventually. And yeah, it does. I mean, this I haven't used in a while and um, it, it came out and you can see that there is um, a lot of super glue caked on this thing. And um, let's see, it might be, it might be clear through there. All right, put that away. I don't need that stuff. That, that's the extra thin um, stuff, which does have its uses. Don't get me wrong. That's why I, I keep it around. Um, I like it. It's just that it was damn bottles, man. Bob Smith Industries is um, infamous for those. All right, so not on camera here, but I'm cutting the um, spike strips off. Yeah, these look pretty neat on there. And let's see, on those were from set one. On set two, there's a there's um one, two, yeah, there's two shorter ones. Um, I think I want to add this to the back of the truck or not. Oh, actually, there's a couple shorter ones on set one as well. I'm just going to, I'm just going to use those. I, I was thinking maybe I want to save them for another time. I get stingy with, with my, even though I have, you know, a few sets of this in reserve. I get stingy with my stuff, so I use it sparingly when possible. Um, because I never know. I, you know, I'll use something and a week later. I'll be working on something else, and that part I used would be perfect, and I don't want to buy a whole kit for it. 
So, all right, so let's fold these um, short spike strips up first. And they're a little sharp, so, you know, be careful with them. I'm gonna finish folding them on the edge of my table here. So the way they're folded is um, they've got, you fold them and you have that lip, so you end up gluing along the lip here, straight down onto the, the side. If it didn't have a lip, it'd be near impossible to glue. Alright, so the second strip is bent, and I forgot to clean that little little burr off the edge there, so I'm going to have to file that away. And this one, oh, so it's easier to do before you fold the edge. Okay, so those little pieces, now I've got these longer ones. Make sure I file them down first. A couple little nubs on the bottom. And a couple on the sides, one on each side, and that one's filed, and this one is filed, filed. Okay, um, I have a pair of needle nose without teeth as well that I use for the longer stuff. So I'm going to use the hard side of this plier as a hard edge for when I'm bending this. The longer the edge is, the harder it can, the trickier it can be to fold. So use whatever trick you have, but that one's done. line up the fold line. Remember the fold line goes on the inside of the fold, not the outside. Just do it like this. There we go. And if this isn't exactly straight, the folded edge, you can put it in your um, flat pliers and smush it flat again. There we go. Okay, so now I've got these spike strips. And again, I'm going to glue them to the bare metal as opposed to the, um, the primer edge, like I keep saying. Well, these are my tweezers. Take the toothpick, get a little glue on it. Run it along that underside here. Just enough glue. And I'm going to put it right in the middle. You notice my hands are kind of shaky. And it's not because I'm doing a video. My hands are actually always like that. I try to rest them on things. And that's why I prefer to use glues that don't set up right away. Um, so, some of you might be impressed that I can do what I do with shaky hands. You know, you adapt. Okay, this one's on. I got a couple spikes on the back of the truck here. Okay, and... I'll put these two little ones on the back of the, of the door hatch. So I'll spread a little glue on that. Yeah, I don't want to. I want to make sure I don't put these all the way over to the edge because, then, you know, you'd be gluing that door shut in real life. It's the little things.
Okay. There. I think that's it for the detailing. So I've got... Um, push that down, snap that in. Okay, so I've got this um, little bit of... I don't know what... Something happened. Oh, okay. So here, look, check out what happened here. I was like, why did that break? Why did that pop up? I didn't account for that. When I put the stitch on, I didn't account for the fact that this hole here is part of the engine thing. So it actually busted that little piece of etch off the corner. The, glue that back on and um, figure out what I'm going to do there. All right. Yeah, not enough glue. So yeah, like I said, mistakes will be made. I need a new toothpick. That one's got glue on both sides. I'm gonna have to get a whole bunch of super glue off my hands later. Which is actually not unusual. All right. Wipe off the excess. Put that down for a bit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm grab another toothpick here. I'm going to actually cut this part of the edge out. And um, that way when that little, this little ex piston exhaust, whatever those are supposed to represent on this particular car thing, are pushed up through, it won't bust the mess mesh off. And um, that little rough edge of mesh there and the fact that it'll have that rough edge and look cobbled together will just add to the whole um, ambiance of the vehicle. Okay, so this is the tricky part though. If I had discovered this earlier, it would have been easier to cut that piece of mesh. Now I've got to figure out how to cut it without busting the whole piece off. Um, I'm not sure that scissors are the way to go. These little nippers are not going to do the trick. Uh, I could try the Dremel. Um, I'm not so worried about the mesh itself as I am the frame around it. The frame around it is going to be the tricky part. You know what? I think I'm going to use these wire cutters. They, they're bent a little bit. I should be able to get up in there. And, um, I feel like if I'm pulling down on it, that'll work better. Okay, so that, yeah, I think that's working. I don't want to push up on the, on the mesh as I'm snipping it, because then I'm likely to do what I already just did here again, which is bust that same corner off. So, all right, just use the scissors. Let me see if that'll work. If I can even get them in there. Huh, yeah. All right, that worked. Um, so, yeah, planning ahead helps. All right, I'm going to use my um, scalpel now. I love the scalpel handle. The scalpel blades themselves are super cheap, and this handle is a lot nicer than the normal flat scalpel handle, as it's um, more comfortable to hold. You have less risk of damaging yourself. But the rest of this etch should just um, be real easy to cut. Yeah, because it's so thin. This is um. 0.020 millimeter thick photo etch. And, um, it's half of that, so it's 0 0.01 millimeter. Did I say inch? 0 0.01 millimeter photo, photo etch in the end. All right. I don't think this blade, I don't know if this is going to work. These blades are super sharp, and the last thing I want to do is. Uh, see, 
because it's also thin, it's also delicate now that I've cut the, the frame, so it's more pliable. Um, all right. How do I want to do this? Just Rich, you ask if there's going to be blood. This might be the um, this might be the thing that causes it. There we go. No blood. He said, realizing he just jinxed himself. And he missed one little bit and has to pull out the thing again. There we go. Okay. Oh, come on. There. All right, that little piece of etch is now out. Surgery is complete. I am going to re-glue down this um, corner of mesh for like the umpteenth time. But now that, um, that should be the last time I have to do that, though. That wouldn't have happened, except I didn't plan for that bit. But that should fit in real nice. kind of want to detail this little piece on top here, too. I'm going to take a look at the photo etch and see what I could put on there. I made one part for one of the sets that's a rocket launcher or um, intake. You could use it for either thing. And I might be able to just mount that right on the top. It's on set three. And it's part, um, I think it's part 27 here. And notice all the fold lines. So that one's gonna be a little more complex to fold, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna at least attempt it and see what it looks like. Let's see, cut this piece out file it and um, give it a look and worst case scenario it doesn't work and move on to something else okay piece is cut photo etch is haphazardly tossed to the side all right so and that's it so I just fold along the fold lines now so that the folds are on the inside. Piece of cake. Fold one. I'm going to fold up the sides of the boxes first. That looks like the easiest workflow for this. Oh, okay. I was wondering why it was bending. There's detail on the other side, so you got to watch. Um, there is this indented detail on the other side. So, because photo etch will fold easier along a fold line, and those are basically lines, it was rounding a little bit as I folded it there. Which is, again, adds to the whole post-apocalyptic look. Okay, so I'm going to fold in this dot section first. And then I'm going to fold... I should, let's see, I'll fold this part, the next one down. Try to fold that as close to 90 degrees as I can. And then this whole section will fold over. And fold this in so that it ends up making a box. And it's going to take a little fiddling to get it just right, but. you end up with this little box here that has the holes like an intake on the front and the sides hanging down and I think I can see what it looks like. If it doesn't look good, I'm not going to use it, but I can't imagine it won't look good. Oh yeah. Okay. I think I kind of dig that. I would have to glue it on last because I wouldn't be able to get the, the body of the car on over top of it. But, uh, oops. Yeah, I like that. I think it look a little beefier, I think. All right, so I think um, that, in addition to this RAM, is all the modification. Oh, spider webbing the back window. After that, that's all the modification I'm going to do. I'm going to get that, um, that spiky 
Dremel bit I was using before. And 99%, yep, here it is. So I always put them back in the bins as soon as I'm done using them because otherwise they will get lost in the, um, in the various piles on my desk. So, you know, um, I didn't always, but I like to put my tools away now. It's very um, helpful. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna cut this window off of the rest of this yet. I'm gonna actually use it as a handle. Put a little bullet hole. Right here. Okay, so I put a little bullet hole right there um, in a place where it probably missed both of the passengers, the passenger and driver's head. I'm gonna take my blade here and I'm just gonna carve the spider webbing. Just gonna draw the lines in this plastic here. Random and... And if it looks good, it looks good. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. If it doesn't look good, then I've learned what not to do. If it ends up filled with blood, I blame Just Rich. Actually, I blame myself. I'm a dumb self. I don't like to blame other people for my mistakes. Okay, so got some spider webbing there, but um, the spider web is complete without the other little cracks in it. Now, I don't know if you can see. But I'm kind of using, um, I'm using the light reflected off of my um, various work lights to, to do this. And some more random cracks. Actually, I probably should have looked up reference first because I'm not sure what this looks like, but I think it's looking pretty good. I usually like to, I usually do a lot of reference, but this is just a fun, quick commission build and a nice little cracked out back bullet hole looking thing here. Um, one thing though is there's now raised edges from where I scratched that in. And I don't really want raised edges, but I, but sanding it will make the window less clear. So I think I'm going to have some 2000 grit um, stuff here, um, sanding paper. I think this might be the Tamiya stuff. And yeah, this is working. I'm just gonna sand it and keep re, you know, when you're wet sanding something to be clear, you wanna keep redoing it. Um, so yeah, the window's not 100% as clear as it was. But that's because this is only the 2000 grit. But I got rid of the, I got rid of the raised edges on those lines, which always bothers me. And I have a finer grit on um, paper here. And I'll take and this might be 8,000. All right. So now the window looks a little frosted, though. Um, let's see, I used the 2,000, the 8,000. That's more 2,000, that's 1,000. I don't want to go digging through my sandpaper bin across the room. All right, well, anyway, the window's a little frosted now. Um, but that's actually very easy to clear up using an old school product that some of you have a love-hate relationship with. A little bit of future. Cotton swab. This is the part where I start losing followers because I'm using future. And I'm just going to cotton swab a little bit of a, that future floor acrylic by Pledge on there and that's going to get that window glossed back in the stuff is going to seep into the the holes 
And um, some people dip canopies into it. I don't like doing that. I feel like it, it collects at the bottom and makes a little bit of a mess. But I do like that the future is thin enough that it goes in there. Now, the window looks good, decent again. Now here's the thing. I don't really care so mu too much about it being cloudy because later on, this is gonna be covered in a layer of dust. But I still like to have the nice um, base to work from here. So I could put a few more layers of future on here, polish it up with some, um, some Tamiya uh, polishing compound and a soft rag. It's like an old t-shirt and um, that window would be good as new. But um, for what this is, for post-apocalyptic, I'm not looking for showroom shine. All right, so I need to cut this um, window off here and I think I'm going to use a razor saw to do it. So let's, actually, you know what? I might score and snap instead since it's plastic. I'm gonna score along the back of the, um, the sunroof, moonroof window here. And I always put my blade, oops, yeah, okay, here we go. I always put my blade back on my um, magnetic tool holder up there. Um, those little blades are sharp, I don't wanna get myself with them. Okay, now I'm gonna bend this down and just wiggle it a little bit. See, I scored it and um, that created a fail line. So it'll fail along that line. I don't have to worry about damaging the rest of the parts. And now I've got the separate rear window here, which, you know, I don't know why I bothered with the bullet hole and the, you know, maybe just to show you guys how I do it. The dust is probably gonna end up covering it up. So these are the parts. I'm calling this done, except for paint, which I will do probably later. But I got a nice hour and a half long, you know, little modeling video out of it. And it's a cool looking truck. Uh, with the paint, I'm gonna do this in a blue color. Um, truck will be blue, kind of a medium to light blue color. And lots of rust, I'll do the hairspray technique with it. So I'm not quite sure how this demo is gonna go because I'll be doing some airbrushing. I'll have my compressor going. I will have my ventilation sh system going. I've got this, uh, when I built this workshop, you notice there's a, a vent hole back here and there's one off to the side where I do my airbrushing. And I built a small shed in my, um, against the back of my house and inside of it is a cheap Harbor Freight dust vac collector. It's for stucking out sawdust and stuff. And um, so what this does is we turn, I flip a switch, it turns on the outlet outside that that's plugged into, and immediately it starts sucking air. And it's got, it's not on because it's kind of loud actually. Not the fan itself. The fan itself is not any louder than the air conditioner, which is right next to it, the um, whole house air unit that's actually louder than the fan the noise in my room though comes from the air being sucked through the long lens of pvc i wasn't accounting for that uh, so it's like a weird um the world's most annoying loud musical instrument so those um that's going to suck out all the air um when i'm dremeling resin or anything i'm usually doing it over that hole or i made this little contraption out of a yogurt lid um, piece of PVC and a cardboard tube. I used to have mesh. I airbrush in front of this so I can airbrush closer to the edge where I'm comfortable and it just gets suctioned down at the back from the air pressure and it sucks away all the dust and fumes. I've got this um, dapping thing here. Um, it's just a hard rubber thing. This is perfect for doing I think everybody should have one of these. Uh, when I do my plants demo, I'll show you how I do it. I use it for when I'm doing rivets. I mean, not rivets, I'm um, eyelets, when I'm hammering eyelets. But it also makes a nice block for this. No air gets through there, and then all the suction ends up at the other one. Or I'll put it over in the airbrush brush station, and all the suction ends up here. And yeah, uh, somebody said it, that's genius. And yeah, I, I really... Um, 
when I had the opportunity to have a new shop here, um, when we put the addition on the back of the house a few years ago, I wanted to do it right. I wanted to um, make sure that all the fumes and all the all the dust and crap were getting sucked outside. It doesn't get everything, and I don't have it on all the time because, like I said, it's noisy. So I still get dust around my shop, but it works. Okay, so I guess that's it for now. I'm going to clean up my work area here from what I did. Put this car and all of its bits inside of this plastic petri dish thing here so that they're all together so that I know where everything is. And when I um, start painting it, I'll do another live demo. And as usual, I'll have my live demos up on YouTube as an archive. So if you missed the live version of it, you could always watch it when it's not live. So um, thanks for watching the four or five of you that kept popping on and off here. And um, I'll show you more later. Uh, check out fictonfood.com for more tips and industriamechanica.com is my um, business, my market production company that I run for other cool stuff. See you guys later. Thanks. Bye.